Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. My name is Dwayne and this is Kevin. Today we're going to come at you with a three part video series uh, because the parts we're going to be installing, they all go hand in hand. Those parts are a coil relocation, a wire tuck and a tank lift on a Sportster model. Before we get into these installations of a very dynamic product, I think we'd appreciate if you guys would like, comment and subscribe to our channel. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a coil and ignition relocation kit. Usually, as Dwayne said, that goes hand in hand with the wire tuck and a tank lift. It's not necessary, but most people do it. Right. So what we're doing is we're relocating the coil, which sits on top of the front cylinder and we're putting it on the left side in the center between the two cylinders. Right, and so when you do that, now you have this wire loom that ran to that space and when you relocate the coil, now you have a void of space. Also your ignition switch, your key switch is attached to the same bracketry. So that gets relocated at the same time. So now what are you gonna do about that big channel of uh, wiring there and the big plastic ugly just wire loom under the frame? You're so going to wire tuck it. You're gonna tuck it above the frame. But that's for the next and that's for the next video uh -huh. and the following video we're going to close it out with lifting the tank because in order to tuck those wires under the tank you got to lift the tank get yourself some clearance you can do it without lifting the tank it's a lot more work uh, i think the aesthetic of a lifted tank looks better regardless and you know i've ridden my sports my sportster all over the country with a wire tuck a tank lift mm -hmm. and a core relocation and I can't tell you how many times people have commented on my Dyna. Because when you lift the tank <laughs> yeah. on a Sportster and clean up that front space, it looks like a longer, it's stre just a bigger more stretched bike. out yeah. bike. Yeah. And so a lot of people, and it just happened two weeks ago at, at the shop, we were saying we need to test XYZ part on a Dyna. And the guy says, there's a diner right in there. And I go, man, no, that's no. a Sportster. Yeah. But it does look more stretched out and longer. We have a complete kit that includes coil relocation kit, as well as the spark plug wires that are the correct length you need with the relocated coil. So uh, now we're gonna get into uh, unboxing these things so you can kind of see what the products actually look like unpackaged. We have these coil relocations for twin cam dynas, twin cam soft tails, as well as uh, 95 to 2003. Sportster models, 04, 06 Sportster models, and of course, today we're working with the 2007 and up Sportster coil relocation. Now, when I say 2007 and up, I mean 2007 up to date. 2022 Sportsters still use the exact same kit. All right, so of course, you're gonna have uh, some zip ties, some stainless hardware, some uh, silicone dampening pads, so those isolate some of the vibrations between the relocated coil and the coil relocation bracket. All right, and now this is the actual coil relocation bracket. Bridges between the cylinders, coil mounts here, ignition switch, key switch mounts right there. This is a laser cut, cold rolled steel, powder coated. It's gonna last just as long as every other component on that bike. Now, one of my favorite things about relocating the coil is it gives you the opportunity to upgrade your spark plug wires. Now, these are the 409 Pro Race Plug wires are 10.4 millimeters. A vast improvement over the OEM, just small, narrow, eight millimeter plug wires uh, found on the OEM applications. These are available in a variety of colors. We also carry Screaming Eagle plug wires, but I personally prefer the Taylor Cable 409 plug wires. Not only do they look a lot better, they seem to last a little longer, cost a little less. So these are my favorite part of this installation. And so now that you've seen everything, we're going to uh, get into the installation now, and I'm glad to be the one to show you how that's done. Now this is two different installations, but like I said earlier, they go hand in hand. One installation, lifting a tank. The other installation, relocating the coil. So we understand some people may already have a tank lift, or some people may already have a coil relocation, albeit that'd be a rare circumstance. Uh, so. It doesn't, you're gonna have two sets of instructions. It's up to you which way you wanna start with first, but in my opinion, it's best to go ahead and unbolt the tank, lift it up out of your way. So we're gonna start there first and foremost, start working our way down. All right, now this can be a little tricky because uh, this is not a captive nut. You have to reach around here 
and uh, hold the half inch hex nut while you loosen the button head. You don't have to remove that back rear fastener, just uh, loosen it enough so your tank will move up and down freely. And uh, again, you don't have to remove the tank entirely. Just put something under, prop it up, get it out of your way. So it's usually a block of wood, something soft, nothing too abrasive. Prop that tank up with it. And uh, now you have plenty of room to work with. You can get that coil off there, relocate it, get your plug wires off. So that's what we're gonna move on to now, relocating the coil. Start first by removing the plug wires. Always grab towards the bottom and lift. Of course, to not damage the plug wires, although we're trashing these plug wires, so it's not really gonna matter, but uh, be mindful. Now these, uh, these plug wires may be bundled up with zip ties and other various ways of attaching these to other wires that are running under there. Now would be a good time to go ahead and cut those zip ties so you don't forget about it and go to pull everything off and it's still attached. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the zip ties that are holding these plug wires on. Push them out of your way. And then uh, we'll remove them from the coil terminal, that last plug wire. Let me get that coil off and get our hands on it. Out in the open, it's easier to work with that way. And so uh, while you have your cutting tool, your dikes out, whatever you're using to cut zip ties, now will be a good time to cut this hideous plastic cover out of the way. It's held on with zip ties as well. So we're going to cut these while we have the tool out. And that's going to give us a chance to kind of see what else we're working with here uh, before we move on to removing this Torx fastener. This fastener is what hold the, holds the coil bracket to the bike and therefore holds the coil to the bike. So we're going to cut these zip ties now. There's also a Torx fastener that holds this cover on. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. All right, get this one last zip tie overlooked out of the way. I know you watching at home probably saw me overlook that zip tie and pointed it out to yourselves, but I caught it. All right, now look at this just mess of wires on here. These are the wires I was referring to when I said we're gonna do a wire tucking wires above the frame, under the tank in this little channel here. All of these wires are gonna be hidden. You're gonna see nothing but a void of space looking through here. It's gonna make it aesthetically, it's gonna look more pleasing to the eye and you'll see much more air space under here. Get a little more airflow to the engine, but uh, it's just a really cool looking modification. Get this monstrosity out of here and there's one even larger on the other side we're gonna get rid of. All right, so now we're moving on to this Torx fastener here for the coil bracket itself. coil just swings out right here and now is going to be a great time to go ahead and unplug that coil there is a connector on the back side of the coil that uh, you don't really want to deep in by pulling on it too hard let's go ahead and unplug it there so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, OEM bracket because we're not going to use it this is going to attach directly to our relocation bracket however on the back side of this bracket there is a little silver plate with little captive threads that uh, the replacement stainless hardware is going to thread into. So save that, set your coil aside, and we'll move on. Now, keep in mind, the key switch is up there. Mounted to the same bracketry as the coil. So we're doing an ignition switch relocation as well. So we're going to move over to the other side and go ahead and release that OEM location of the ignition switch. All right, so now we're, we're over on the air cleaner side of the bike, the right side of the bike. And you can see there's a much larger, more hideous plastic cover on this side. We're gonna go ahead and get that out of our way now. Get them on, I think I did. Now a lot of this is attached with the, uh, I call them the little Christmas tree snaps. Uh, you'll see them there and you're going to start pulling those out of place. Uh, the ignition switch brackets attached via these as well. See it back there. Be mindful, you don't want to pull on any cables too tight, pull anything loose. Uh, it's all going to come out once it's out, out, from, out from that tangled knot of wiring. See, it looks like even more wires on this side that were all hidden by this, but we're discarding this. We're going to tuck those wires up nicely under the tank after we lo relocate this ignition to the coil side on the left side of the bike. That's a perfect time to go ahead and remove the OEM key switch bracket. Let's 
let that hang loosely there before we relocate it to the other side. Again, the only components we're relocating is the ignition switch and the coil. So when you're on this side, you wanna go ahead and kind of unravel the ignition switch from all this wiring. There's some, some aftermarket wiring that's been done here, but uh, you don't wanna get this ignition switch wire bundled up with the wires you're gonna tuck under the tank because it goes to the other side, it doesn't go under the tank. So what I'm gonna do, you notice it's in a, a huge bundle here. This other, I'm gonna go over the bundle of wires to the other side and uh, we'll deal with the slack later. We just don't wanna get these ignition switch wires tangled up with any wires we're gonna tuck under the tank. All right, so this violet, violet color tipped wire, that's the one we pulled from the backside of the plug. And we're gonna just make sure it's not bundled with any of the wires or overlapping any of the wires we're gonna tuck. And uh, just look in there and make sure it looks pretty good. All right, so the coil is gonna be mounted here. Key switch is gonna be mounted here. These wires are where they need to be. All right, so now that everything's over here, let's go ahead and button this side up entirely before we move on to doing the wire tuck and completing the installation with the tank lid. Because the coil mounts right here, it's gonna use these Torx bolts here, these Torx head bolts here. And uh, these are not a screw you wanna strip out because if you do, if you have to replace these, you gotta go to a dealership and get them. They're you know, an oddball length, so it's not something you could, I mean, I assume you could go to a hardware store, but just use the right size, T45, you won't have any issues. Hold on to these bolts because you're gonna reuse those. All right, so we have our coil bracket. And of course we still have this little captive piece that goes on the back side of the coil bracket. And uh, you're gonna use the new hardware that we supply. Go and pass those through. But we also supply an isolator. It's right here, it's shaped just like this. You can see exactly how it needs to go on. And uh, this kind of dampens the vibrations, just extends the life of all the components uh, because these bikes do vibrate. You don't want anything vibrating loose or breaking. So uh, always install the dampener between the coil and the bracket. All right, once it's on there, it's like that. And then uh, of course, coil mounts to the bracket like so. And uh, now's the time where you will place your uh, thread locker on the threads. And so just so we don't make a mess, we're gonna put the thread locker on the receiving threads and it's just gonna work just as well that way. I know a lot of you guys just put it on the male threads, the bolt threads. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna do this just so we don't make a mess. So the cool thing about that uh, dampener is it'll hold your bolts for you. So you can go ahead and mount those on there now. And that's it, that's how it's gonna look. Little tab there, that's for the ignition switch. And it's gonna mount like so. One thing I wanna point out, you don't have to over tighten these. There's no exact torque spec to it uh, because we hand cut that silicone, but you wanna get it just high enough where it starts to pooch the silicone. I mean, you don't wanna compress it all the way. You don't wanna tighten these down super tight. Uh, just tight enough to start compressing that silicone just for make, to make for a really uniform look. It's gonna be tight enough to hold in place. You have thread locker on here. They're not gonna back out and uh, you know, getting it just tight enough will be sufficient. Now I have my T45 Torx bolts that we took out previously. Again, you're gonna hold on to these because they will be reused. These are what's gonna fasten the relocation bracket to the engine. As always, medium thread locker. Go ahead and set your coil up into place. Start threading the uh, fastener in. Don't fasten it all the way down. There's some side to side movement here and you're gonna center that before you fasten everything in place. Now these are gonna be torqued to a specific value. We're gonna do that a little later. Just wanna make sure everything's centered, start fastening it down. And also be mindful that you're not, um, you know, putting yourself in a bind. Make sure your uh, key switch wire is on the outside of this bracket. You don't want to fasten this down and realize your key switch is hidden behind it. You got to take it back off. So uh, we're going to move on. This is on there, just fastened in place. We're going to go back and torque it when we button everything up. Now you can do this before or after. I should have done it before, but you can go ahead and plug this into the back side of the coil now. Now 
that's it. So the only thing left to do before we button up the coil relocation installation is to fasten the key switch to the bracket. And that's what the second isolator uh, pad is for. It's gonna go right here. And of course, you're gonna use thread locker on this. It's just one fastener that holds this uh, key switch on. Same as with the OEM. I mean, it's just one fastener and uh, it's gonna attach the same way OEM, same way the OEM switch attaches. I like to go ahead and install the uh, dampener pad so that it'll stay in place. Now these dampener pads, they are hand cut, so you wanna kinda of orientate it for the cleanest look. Uh, it's not ever gonna be perfect because again, we cut these by hand. Uh, so it just adds to the charm of the kit. Now these are high heat silicone, so they're not gonna get softer over time and uh, start to wear out and bolts become loose. Uh, it's just gonna be there to dampen vibration. It's gonna last the life of the kit. All right, I'm gonna make sure everything's straight before you really fasten this one down. You can't really get a torque wrench in on this, but just get it tight enough to, uh, again, compress the uh, silicone. It's starting to be compressed. I could get a few more cranks on it, but I'm not gonna over tighten it. That's more than sufficient. Now I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down before I put the plug wires on. Now, every bike's a little different. Some bikes have a horn bracket here, so that would call for a different uh, torque spec as far as what the manual states. But uh, for these bolts, they're gonna be 17 to 24 foot pounds. Uh, and keep in mind, this isn't a moving component, so it's not super important, but we're gonna go ahead and torque them anyway. And again, these are 17 to 24 foot pounds. Now here comes my favorite part, installing the plug wires. Man, these are a treat. They're one of the best modifications you can do to these bikes. You're gonna see improved for auto response. Just overall, you're gonna love the aesthetic of these plug wires. So the, this boot end, this is what installs onto the head of the plug, and uh, you'll push it. You'll feel a distinctive click. You'll feel it go onto the terminal, and that's it. You want to get those all the way on. You don't want them halfway on. And then, of course, on this terminal, the same thing, the terminal of the coil. I felt that one click. That one's on there perfectly. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to feel a distinctive click. All right, now something I want to point out that's not necessarily just, you know, aligned with relocating the ignition switch. This happens with the ignition switch in the OEM location. A lot of people make the mistake of having so much weight dangling from these keys. And so, uh, you know, it gets in there and there's a lot of headwinds here blowing this around. Now the key fob, that's okay. You know, a cloth uh, key tag, I'll pull a picture up right now of what I'm referring to with a key tag. Those are fine because they weigh, they weigh almost nothing. And, uh, but you know, don't have your house keys and your truck keys and other key fobs just hanging from this, dangling in the wind. It's gonna damage the terminals inside here and uh, you're gonna have a bad day when it comes time to replace this or you get your key in there and it won't turn. So uh, do yourself a favor, don't hang anything, anything unneeded from your key with or without any ignition relocation. And that's it, you can see it's a really clean aesthetic. You know, ignore the wires here. Uh, it's just centered perfectly. Uh, to me, it makes it more symmetrical with the air cleaner side because on this side, your knee can feel the air cleaner. On this side, it's kind of a void of space. So it's nice having something there to make the bike feel more symmetrical. And I think it just looks nice. And of course, like I said, there's the performance benefit to the upgraded plug wires. So if you were watching this video to learn how to install the coil relocation, that's it. Next, we're gonna move on to the wire tug and finally button it all up by installing the tank lift brackets. So if you have questions about fitment for your particular model, leave us a comment below or shoot me an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com. Y'all ride safe out there.